All right. Uh, so little facts in this case, but how is the procedure going to work? We've got uh, Eric Zond. Did I say that right, Eric? You got it right, McGraw. Eric Zond, past president of the Missouri Association of Prosecuting Attorneys. You're the Platte County prosecutor. Thanks for joining us. Glad to be with you, McGraw, Kelly. Uh, all right. So what happens? What happens? Uh, what happens now? What What are Bob McCullough's options here, and how is that going to differ from the FBI options going forward on this case? Well, St. Louis County is continuing the criminal investigation while the FBI is looking into the civil rights side of this. And, and Mr. McCullough has said he's going to present this um, to a grand jury, maybe starting as early as tomorrow. And and that's important because what we know about that is that there will be 12 independent people who will take a look at the facts of these case facts that, as you point out, most of us don't know, but but they will learn those facts and then make a decision about what happened that, that very tragic day. So what happens is, if it's going to take weeks? Does McCullough call them and say, I want to talk to you on next Tuesday and next Wednesday, but then I, I won't need you until the following Monday? How does that work? Yeah, they ha- the grand jury has the power to subpoena witnesses, and we'll do that, and we'll hear, as, as Bob McCullough has said, they're going to hear and see every shred of evidence in this case. And so it probably will take a period of weeks, and they'll schedule witnesses to come in and, and speak to the grand jury. And it's important to note that all of the proceedings before the grand jury are held in secret, and that's important. that The witnesses are sworn not to talk about what has happened before the grand jury, because that prevents witnesses from either intentionally or unintentionally um, colluding to, to see that their uh, testimony is, is similar to one another. All Can you right. explain the grand jury process, though? How are they selected? The grand jurors are selected just like a, a, a regular jury is selected. They're brought into the courtroom, questioned by the prosecutor or the judge to find 12 people who can be fair and impartial um, in dealing with several cases. This grand jury was not seated just to hear this case. My, my guess is that this grand jury had been impaneled well before this, have been hearing other cases, and now, because of what happened um, in Ferguson, um, we'll hear this case as well. How long can a grand jury be impaneled for? Grand jury can be impaneled for six months normally, then they can be extended to, to hear cases that they're already hearing for a maximum of two more months. Who, who's got eight months to, to, to go every day to the courthouse to hear these cases? Well, typically grand jurors don't go every day. They, they, they usually go once a week sometimes, and in other jurisdictions once a month. I believe in St. Louis County, their grand jury meets once a week. All right, I want to go back to something you said earlier, that grand jury testimony is private, and that... Um, people, the, the 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 witnesses come in, and they're sworn to secrecy, um, right? Is that correct? That's ex- absolutely correct. Okay. The minute they walk out that door, the news media can ask them any question they want, and they can legally say what their testimony was, right? They're actually sworn to to not say um, what has happened in that grand jury room. So we'll see what happens uh, in this case. But the oath they take says that uh, that they will keep what happens what goes on in that grand jury room secret i but i thought that they were allowed uh, because i've talked to a couple of attorneys about this and they say that while the grand jury proceedings are private when you're a witness and you walk out you have your constitutional right to say anything you want well that's certainly true in the federal system it's probably true in the end that that uh, first amendment right to speak perhaps trump's the oath uh, that they take, but I will tell you, the oath that they take says that they will keep what happens inside that grand jury room secret. Now, is there any chance that um, prosecution or defense would feel that any, because of such a huge media um, following on this, that they would feel that any of them would be prejudicial because of all the coverage? Well, I mean, you know, again, that's the reason that those proceedings within that grand jury room are kept secret. The, the goal for, for Bob McCullough is going to be to try to insulate those grand jurors as much as he can from what's going on on the outside. We all realize that this is the exceptional case that is, has garnered not only local but national, international attention. That's going to be very, very difficult. But, but the job of those grand jurors in Bob McCullough's office is to try to shut all of that out look at the evidence, and try to determine what happened that fateful day. Um, okay, so uh, why is he, or why would one, start a grand jury proceedings if the investigation is not complete? 
You know, I think in, in this situation, there is there is a lot of impetus to try to, to do as much as we can. Obviously, we want the grand jury to have access to every shred of evidence, but I think obviously we want to move as quickly as we can, but also deliberately. And I think I think that's what Bob McCall is trying to to balance is getting evidence to the to the grand jury as as quickly as we can, so we can bring this to a resolution as soon as possible after all the evidence has been collected and presented to them. He asked, so you can start now presenting some things and, and continue the investigation. He asked the questions, is there anybody cross-examining his witnesses up there? There, There is not. There is no right. Um, in fact, the defense attorney is prohibited from being in the grand jury room. The rules just don't allow that. And so it's, it's a prosecution of the grand jurors. And this is important, too, McGraw that once that grand jury begins to deliberate about what happened and they decide are they going to bring an indictment or not, nobody other than the grand jurors is in the room. There's no prosecutor in the room. Nobody other than the grand juries is in there when they deliberate. What are the numbers? What's the percentage of grand juries, the prosecutors going to get an indictment from a grand jury and the grand jury not indicting? I mean, it's very rare, it right? It actually does happen from time to time. People have the old saying that uh, that a, uh, a prosecutor could get a grand jury to indict a ham sandwich um, if they wanted. But I will tell you, that's not that's not entirely true. Uh, grand juries do a good job of of sorting the the reality from things that aren't true. And um, so, I, I, this is a system that I think um, really works. We've used it um, for centuries um, in in this nation, yeah. and uh, so I trust it. Eric, have you ever indicted a ham sandwich? I have never indicted a ham sandwich. All right, breaking news here on the Big 550 KTRS. Platte County Prosecuting Attorney Eric Zod, and you are director of, uh, excuse me, past president of the Missouri Association for Prosecuting Attorneys. Eric, thanks for checking in. Some great info uh, this morning. Hey, so good to be with you, McGraw. Take care. You got it.